Hey everybody, Hoodie Coco here. You may be wondering why I look like this. Or maybe you're not, but at any rate, it's my privilege to announce that Timmer's annual charity drive has launched. Over at the YouTube show Half the Battle, Timmer is giving away some really cool prizes, and I have even donated a prize to the charity drive. You could win these prizes by donating to a charity that benefits children. You can send proof of your donation to Timmer to be entered in the drawing to win some really cool stuff, and you get to do something that makes the world a better place and benefit children. And that's great even without prizes. Timmer has a video that explains the process. I will put a link in the description of this video. Please check it out and please help if you can. This is one of the best things the G.I. Joe fan community does every year and I really think we can help a lot of people. And don't forget you have a chance to win some really cool stuff. Uh, I guess that doesn't really explain why I look like this. Uh, you'll find out later, it'll all make sense in context. Please check out Timmer's video, and please help if you can. Let's make this a great Christmas for a lot of kids. Hey everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. I was just practicing being a silent assassin because this episode is about a ninja. And not just any ninja, one of the most important ninjas in all of G.I. Joe. I'm talking, of course, about Storm Shadow. And I need to thank a few people for this episode. Thank you to Brian Wilkins for the title card image for this video. I think it looks awesome. He goes by the name Special Mission for on Instagram and Facebook, so please check out his work. I also need to thank Matt Todd for this t-shirt, which is perfect for this video. He's done a lot of really cool G.I. Joe themed artwork, which I think you should check out. And you can order his artwork on t-shirts like this. I should have a link for you. Check out Matt's work. When I have a lot of people to thank in a video, that means there's a lot of cool stuff going on in your G.I. Joe fan community. Speaking of cool stuff, stuff going on in the community, we have a special guest in this episode. Joe Slepsky from the Joe on Joe podcast will be joining us later. Hey everyone, this is Joe from the Joe on Joe podcast. You can hear me every Wednesday talking about the animated G.I. Joe series. We go over every episode of G.I. Joe Real American Hero in sequential order uh, and comment on it mystery science style. I have guests... Uh, Hoodie Cobra Commander's been on my show. I've guests from all over the world on it. We talk, we laugh, and we have a whole lot of fun. So tune in, Joe and Joe Podcast. Find it on iTunes. Find it anywhere you find your podcast. Thanks for being here, Joe. You will see him later in this video where he will look at how Storm Shadow was portrayed in G.I. Joe Media. So, Storm Shadow. Great Ninja or Greatest Ninja? Now, some of you guys criticize ninjas in G.I. Joe, and there's some validity to that criticism. Especially in the 1990s, ninjas kind of got overdone. But I still maintain that there is a proper place for ninjas in G.I. Joe, and it's hard to imagine G.I. Joe without Storm Shadow. The first version of Storm Shadow in 1984 looked like this t-shirt, but there was a second version of Storm Shadow in 1988, and it was pretty sweet too. I'm looking forward to reviewing it. I love Storm Shadow with all of my body. So are you ready to get pumped? In this video, we are going to look at real ultimate power. HCC 788 presents the second version of Storm Shadow from 1988.
This is Storm Shadow, G.I. Joe's Ninja from 1988. This figure was first available in 1988 and was also available in 1989. It was discontinued for 1990. The character of Storm Shadow was first introduced as a bad guy, as a Cobra Ninja in 1984. That's when the first version of Storm Shadow was released. The first version of Storm Shadow in 1984 was the first G.I. Joe character to be designated as a ninja, and this this figure is one of the most popular figures in the entire vintage G.I. Joe line. Technically, G.I. Joe's first ninja character was Snake Eyes. Introduced as a commando in 1982, he was later given a ninja backstory. Snake Eyes' ninja backstory was hinted at in the G.I. Joe comic book series as early as issue number 10, which predated the release of Storm Shadow by about a year. The histories of Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow are linked. In fact, this is probably the most important friendship in the entire G.I. Joe mythos. The histories of these two men connect many other characters in the G.I. Joe universe. I don't think it's fair to talk about Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow without also talking about their friend and war buddy, Stalker. It's through Stalker that Snake Eyes came to be a member of the G.I. Joe team. Joe Slepsky will talk more about these guys in the media section of this review, so please stick around for that. There were a couple later versions of Storm Shadow in the vintage era. Era. Version 3 from 1992 was in the Ninja Force subset. Version 4 from 1994 was in the Shadow Ninjas subset. And because Storm Shadow is an immensely popular character, there were many versions of Storm Shadow issued after the Vintage Era. Storm Shadow is not the only Cobra to switch sides and become a Joe. Mercer from 1987 in the Sergeant Slaughter's Renegades subset was also a Cobra, but there was no Cobra figure issued issued for him. That was just part of his backstory write-up. Storm Shadow had both Cobra and Joe figures issued. Let's take a quick look at version 1 of Storm Shadow because this was such a popular figure. And as you can see, this is an acceptable ninja. He's wearing a white uniform. This is most likely inspired by the 1981 movie Enter the Ninja, which had a ninja in a white uniform. It's not good camouflage, but he just looked so cool. Ninjas were absurdly popular in the 1980s, appearing in movies and comic books. They were mysterious, silent assassins. There's a danger of making ninjas into invincible murder machines. They're essentially unbeatable. That makes the characters less interesting. Their fights are less interesting because essentially a ninja can never lose. That did happen sometimes with ninjas in G.I. Joe, but not all the time. Ninja, or Shinobi, were real in feudal Japan. They were covert agents and mercenaries. They operated during the Sengoku period from the 15th to the 17th century. After the unification of Japan in the post-feudal era, the services of the ninja wasn't in great need and they faded from the scene. Though ninjas were real, they aren't related to modern warfare. G.I. Joe is a military-themed toy line. Ninjas can feature in G.I. Joe, but you have to be careful not to stray too far from the core theme lest you dive into absurdity. Just because a little of something is good does not mean more is better. Unfortunately, in the 1990s, G.I. Joe went way overboard with ninjas. They had the Ninja Force subset in 1992 and 1993, and the Shadow Ninjas subset in 1994. I don't mind ninjas in G.I. Joe. I think they can fit, but not not everybody likes them, and for those who don't like ninjas in G.I. Joe, this is the kind of thing to worry about. Let's take a look at Storm Shadow's accessories, starting with what I believe is the most important one, his bow. This is a compound bow. It is black. It has what appears to be a scope on it, and it has three arrows sculpted on, and the holster for the arrows appears to have a Japanese rising sun detail detail on it. This is not a traditional Japanese weapon. This is a modern archery weapon. A compound bow uses pulleys to bend the limbs of the bow.
bow and you can see the pulleys sculpted onto this bow. This is an important accessory because according to the G.I. Joe comic book series, Snake Eyes was better with the sword, but Storm Shadow was the master archer. There were a couple reissues of this bow in the vintage era. It was reused for Zartan version 2 in 1993. It was recolored orange for that figure. It was also used for Night Creeper version 2 in 1993, and his bow was blue. Both of these figures are Ninja Force figures. I don't know about the Night Creeper, but the reuse of this bow for Zartan is entirely appropriate. Zartan assassinated Storm Shadow's uncle, the Hardmaster, while disguised as Storm Shadow using a compound bow like this. A quick comparison between the version 2 Storm Shadow bow and the one that came with version 1. The version 1 Storm Shadow bow was called a long bow, which is obviously incorrect. It's very short. Uh, the one I have here is broken. The bow string is broken. It's not supposed to look like that. The version 1 Storm Shadow bow is very small and very delicate compared to the much more substantial bow that came with version 2. One nice feature of the version 1 bow is it attaches to the backpack. The version 2 bow did not do that. His next accessory is his claw. This claw clips onto his wrist. I find it's better to clip it onto his left wrist because putting it on his right wrist can cause paint wear on his tattoo. The claw is black. It has three long prongs like Wolverine claws. This accessory was reissued several times in the vintage era and I'm not going to drag all of those out. You've already seen them in previous reviews. This claw is probably based on the Japanese weapon, the Teko Kagi, which is a handheld claw weapon. These prongs are too long to be used for climbing, so this does look like it's intended to be a melee weapon. This claw did not have an accessory counterpart on the version 1 figure. Instead, the version 1 figure came with nunchucks, and the version 2 figure did not. Storm Shadow's next accessory is his sword. It holsters in his backpack. We will take a look at the backpack in a moment, but let's look at the sword first. It is made entirely of red plastic. It has minimal detail. It does have some detail on the handle. Not very much, though. Because of the way the sword holsters on the backpack, it can suffer from plastic stress, and you can see some white plastic stress marks on this sword. Paint applications on vintage G.I. Joe accessories was rare, but this is a case where it really would have helped. A silver blade would have looked a lot better than the plain red plastic. This is probably based on the ninja toe, or ninja sword. The ninja toe is not a traditional ninja weapon from feudal Japan. It is a modern invention. Although Storm Shadow was better than Snake Eyes with the bow, it is appropriate for Storm Shadow to come with this accessory because he could hold his own with a sword as well. Version 1 of Storm Shadow came with not one but two swords, one shorter and one longer. Also unpainted but looking pretty good in black. Like the version 2 sword, both of these swords would holster in Storm Shadow's backpack. The final accessory for Storm Shadow is his backpack. He comes with a fairly large red backpack. On one side it has three teeth and that is where the sword holsters in. Fits pretty snugly, it shouldn't fall out and it's easy to pull out. There is some detail on this backpack on the top and on the bottom it has sculpted in some ninja throwing stars. On this all red unpainted backpack we have sculpted in nunchucks, non-removable. That's unfortunate. Version 1 of Storm Shadow had a nunchuck accessory that would holster on the backpack. We have this detail here on the backpack. I'm not 100% certain what it is, but I think it's a collapsed rope ladder. Why is this backpack red? I think it's red to just add a splash of color to the figure. Version 1 of Storm Shadow had that red cobra emblem, which gave him a little spot of color. Version 2 does have a red tattoo, but that's a bit smaller, so I think they just wanted to add a bit more color with the accessories. And I guess the red backpack and sword are fine, but I can't help but imagine these in black or gray. Storm Shadow isn't wearing the best camouflage anyway, but you could imagine he is camouflaged camouflaged for a snowy environment, but the red pretty much does away with that. One thing that's great about the version 1 backpack is it stores all of the accessories. It holds a bow, 
it holds two swords, and it holds the nunchucks. And not only that, the backpack also opens up. Here we can see the arrows inside the backpack as opposed to the arrows that are sculpted on version 2's bow. This is one of the best and most functional backpacks in the entire vintage G.I. Joe era, and the version 2 backpack just doesn't quite measure up. This version 2 backpack is just a basic backpack with a holster for a sword, exactly the same as the version 2 backpack on Snake Eyes. What I want from this version 2 backpack is for it to hold Storm Shadow's other accessories, which it does not. This is the second version of the figure. This is an opportunity to update and improve, and you just cannot miss this kind of opportunity. Let's take a look at the sculpt, design, and color of Storm Shadow, and let's start by talking about a variant. Some of these Storm Shadow figures are stamped made in China, and others are stamped made in Hong Kong. This one is made in Hong Kong, and there is a very slight color variation between the two. It's very subtle. In fact, it's so subtle that it is not the type of variant that I would hunt down. If you have a Storm Shadow that is marked Made in China, you may notice a very subtle color difference between them. Let's take a look at Storm Shadow's head. He's wearing a hood over a balaclava mask. You can see his eyes. The hood is white and it has a gray breakup camouflage pattern. These blocky shapes that look kind of like Tetris blocks. This gray camouflage pattern is the biggest departure from version 1's plain white mask. Not everyone likes this camouflage pattern. I have to assume this camouflage is supposed to make it more difficult for an enemy to target a vital spot. I have mixed feelings about it, but I think if the figure didn't have the camouflage, I probably wouldn't like it as much. Looking at Storm Shadow's chest, he has a white uniform with that same gray blocky camouflage pattern. He has a gray rope that goes across his chest and back. That gray rope replaces the black sash detail on the version 1 figure. He has some white unpainted pouches across his waist, and it looks like that is supposed to be a belt an unpainted belt. On his arms he has sleeves that are loose fitting and they are white again with that gray camouflage pattern. We are sticking with that theme for the whole figure. His forearms are bare and on his right forearm he has a tampo, a red tattoo. This tattoo is vitally important. This is the Arashikage tattoo. This is the symbol of Storm Shadow's ninja clan. Snake Eyes was also a part of the Arashikage Shikage ninja clan, but he always had his arms covered so we never saw his tattoo. Version 1 of Storm Shadow would have had that tattoo, but he also had his forearms covered. Arashikage is a Japanese compound word. Arashi meaning storm and kage meaning shadow. It translates literally to Storm Shadow. Storm Shadow and Snake Eyes were not the only Arashikage ninjas in G.I. Joe. Jinx from 1986 was also an Arashikage ninja. Her uniform covered up her forearm, but in the comic book series she also had the Arashikage tattoo. A great deal of time was spent in the comic book series exploring the Arashikage history and linking that ninja clan to many G.I. Joe characters. This symbol on Storm Shadow's arm is a hexagram from the I Ching. This particular hexagram is number 63, called Already fording, denoting something that is already completed. The upper segment represents water, the lower segment represents flame. Could this be an allusion to the Chinese symbol the yin and yang? The Chinese yin and yang is intended to illustrate how opposing forces can be complementary, and this may be reflected in Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow themselves, with one clad in black, the other clad in white, but complementing and and completing each other. Moving on to the waist piece, the waist piece is white with that same blocky gray camouflage pattern. Otherwise, not a lot of detail on the waist piece. On the legs, we have white loose fitting trousers with that same gray blocky camouflage pattern on the upper legs. We do not have any weapons sculpted onto the legs. On the lower legs, we have leg coverings that look like they are fastened with a couple bands, and we have some white foot coverings, which I believe are 
supposed to be Japanese Tabi. This is similar to the version one figure, uh, but of course the version one figure did not have that gray camouflage pattern. Before we move on to talking about the file card, we can do a very brief compare and contrast between this vintage era Storm Shadow figure and two modern era Storm Shadow figures. I have version 22 from 2007, a 25th anniversary figure, and version 50 from 2015, a 50th anniversary figure. Looking at version 22, we can see they were trying to give us a modern updated figure in the same basic style as version 2. We do have the white uniform with the gray camouflage pattern. We have the hood over the mask. Mask. We have a bow and swords and arrows on the backpack. Uh, so we do have some decent looking accessories, but the accessories kind of look like they would go with version one. They don't look like updated accessories of the version two figure. This version 22 is actually a wholesale reuse of the entire body of the modern updated version one figure. They just reused the whole body and gave him a new head a new paint job and some different accessories but otherwise it is exactly the same figure i am not a collector of modern gi joe and this is one of the reasons why i have a big problem with this reuse of parts on modern figures modern figures are geared more toward adult collectors and they can run a bit high at retail the reuse of parts in the vintage era was a bit of a problem but it is rampant in the modern era Era. They tried to get away with issuing new figures on the cheap, which is not good for a premium collectible. Now let's look at version 50, the 50th anniversary figure from 2015. And this does actually have a lot of details copied over from version 2 and an update of version 2's accessories. Version 50 did come with a compound bow and a quiver, and it had a single removable arrow, and that's pretty cool. However, However, I have not been able to figure out how all these accessories work together. I believe they're supposed to, but they don't seem to work for me. Most of the accessories look pretty good. We do have the claw. We have a rope piece that actually is a separate piece that goes across his body. We have two swords and silver blades this time. Both of those swords will holster in the backpack. The backpack um, is pretty cool too. It has a removable rope piece that attaches to it. And this backpack opens up uh, a little bit like version one's backpack to reveal lots of detail inside. As nice as these accessories look, they can be a bit fiddly and delicate and they can be somewhat difficult to keep in the figure's hand. Besides the accessories, I have a few other problems with the figure. I think his eyes look kind of weird. To me, it looks like he's always looking up or he's rolling his eyes at you. Also, this figure is very difficult to keep keep on the figure stand. The pegs on the figure stand do not seem to fit the holes on the feet and you really have to press hard to fit the figure on the stand and even then he doesn't stay very well. And then I also have a problem with the proportions of this figure. Like a lot of modern era figures this guy looks a bit stretched out. It looks like he's been put through the taffy stretcher. Some modern figures came with removable vest pieces and with those on the proportions didn't quite look so bad. But with Without that, these guys do seem a bit stretched and they all seem to have giraffe necks. I like the proportions on version 22 and I like the details and the accessories on version 50. Now let's take a look at Storm Shadow's file card. His file card has his faction as G.I. Joe updated from the version 1 file card. He has switched sides. There is some really nice artwork here for the portrait of Storm Shadow. It has his code name as Storm Shadow and he is the ninja. His file name is classified, but if you read the G.I. Joe comic book, you know his name. His name is Tommy Arashikage. Primary military specialty is covert operations. Seems appropriate for a ninja. And that's all of the information up here at the top. This paragraph says, Storm Shadow served with Snake Eyes in Southeast Asia, and both of them later studied the secret arts of ninjutsu with Storm Shadow's family, a ninja clan that could trace its history back through 30 generations of assassins. Unhinged by the murder of his uncle and mentor, he infiltrated Cobra, seeking revenge, but found vengeance to be a poor substitute.
substitute for life. Now in semi-retirement at a remote mountain hideaway, he occasionally takes on a special mission or two, if Snake Eyes asks him nicely. This top paragraph sums up the comic book continuity very succinctly. Joe Slupsky will be giving us more detail on this story in a moment. This bottom paragraph has a quote. It says, A ninja is a silent wraith with a razor-edged blade in one hand and a scaling grapple in the other. Ninjas can penetrate the most sophisticated defenses and leave without a trace. They are mystic swordsmen, spies, assassins, acrobats, quick-change artists, and conjurers. Most people will tell you that ninjas don't exist. That's exactly what the ninjas want you to believe. This file card is a significant update from the version 1 file card. It essentially gets you up to date on the G.I. Joe comic book continuity. Speaking of which, let's turn it over to Joe Slipsky to talk about Storm Shadow's appearances in G.I. Joe media. Today we're talking about Storm Shadow, the Cobra Ninja, Snake Eyes' counterpart. He is a massively huge character. So first we're going to look at his video appearances. So his appearance on the cartoon, the Sunbow series. He first appeared in the Revenge of Cobra Part 1, but he didn't say anything. He didn't have a speaking role until we got to Revenge of Cobra Part 3. Then you got to jump forward quite a few episodes till you get to my one of my favorite episodes of all time, Satellite Down, which pitted Storm Shadow against Spirit in the race for a satellite that had fallen from the sky and was now being worshipped by a tribe of like aboriginals. Now, it's important to note that Storm Shadow was not used as a major character in G.I. Joe and he was not pitted up against Snake Eyes. Why is that? Because Snake Eyes can't talk. So it was the animators found it really difficult to give Storm Shadow a meaty role because his enemy, or in this case the good guy, Snake Eyes, had nothing to do because he can't really talk. And we find that out very much so when you go forward to the DIC episodes. His other most memorable episode from the Sunbow series was when he found the sword Excalibur. Now, in their version of the story, Excalibur like had magical powers itself, so he could use it to command giant armies, kind of like how the Ark of the Covenant was going to be used in Raiders of the Lost Ark. Um, it didn't work out very well for Cobra, but that was probably Storm Shadow's like, biggest featured length episode. Strangely enough, they did an episode called Ninja Holiday in which Storm Shadow was in, but really didn't, he wasn't the lead on the show. It was really weird. And all those appearances on the Sunbow series were in his original white uniform, as you can see right there. Sometimes he had sleeves, sometimes he had bare arms. It was, the animation was always a little off either way. Now, on the DIC episodes, he made an appearance very sparingly, and that's when he showed up in his version 2 uniform, the one with the, uh, the, the gray camouflage checkered one. You guys know the look. And it was the episode called The Sword, which really resembled the episode Excalibur. It was almost like a rehash of it. But in that episode, he was a good guy, and he teamed up with Snake Eyes, and they actually, that strangely, that's the episode that really told the, like, kinship or the bond that he and Snake Eyes actually had. It illustrated it the best. And watching that episode, you can see how it really would have been difficult to have Snake Eyes be a major, major character on, on more episodes than he was. Because there was a lot of scenes like this where Storm Shadow would be like, Oh, Snake Eyes, uh, boy, it's a good thing we stopped that plan. And then they would cut to Snake Eyes going, Yeah, I agree, Sword Brother. Like, that was the extent of it. Like, it was awkward to watch an animation. So, I love Snake Eyes in animation, but it could be tough. Now, onto the comic books. That's something I love. It's very near to my heart. Storm Shadow's first appearance is very often overlooked because it's actually in one of them, if definitely the most popular comic book of all time in G.I. Joe, but one of the most popular comic books in all of the 1980s, the silent issues, G.I. Joe number 21. So everyone talks about that issue as, oh, it's the time Snake Eyes stormed the castle and there's, there's no dialogue and it's all this, and it is all of that. But it's also Storm Shadow's first appearance and everyone overlooks that. Uh, at the end of the issue, it, what, what creates this bond between the two characters that cements it on a on a level that no real dialogue ever could is they fought a lot throughout the issue and uh storm shadows uh armband got cut by snake eye sword and it unravels at the very end of the issue and there you see that he's got the r chicago tattoo which on snake eyes suit it also had gotten sliced open and we saw that he had the same tattoo and so that it's like the um it's like when they show they don't show the killer in a horror movie because your brain is conjuring up way worse things than any special effects guy could do. And in that issue, our brains 
created so many more ideas for how these guys were connected than any line of dialogue ever could have done. Oh, hey, you're my brother from the military thing. Like, if he had spelled it out right away, we would have been cemented in in kind of one corner. And I think that's how Larry Hama wrote it, uh, because it just created all these avenues for growth for Storm Shadow. And which would come into play because just a few issues later, in issues 26 and 27, we learned, quote, Snake Eyes' origin, but in the meantime, it was also Storm Shadow's origin. And Larry told us that Storm Shadow was in the same military unit as Snake Eyes. It was an LRRP unit, Long Range Recon Patrol. And after the army, after the military, they served in Vietnam, he invited Snake Eyes to join his family at their Arshikage Ninja Clan. There, training Snake Eyes as a ninja, um, there was some tomfoolery. And Storm Shadow's uncle, the Hardmaster, actually got killed by an arrow that was Storm Shadow's arrow, thus branding him a traitor and putting him on the run for years and years and years. It wouldn't be until much, much later that they'd reveal the killer, which I don't want to do right now because of spoilers. And so during the origin issues, we saw Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow fight and he escapes. And the next time we see him, he's working as, again, as a bodyguard for Cobra Commander. And he uh, saves him from an assassination attempt by Billy, Cobra Commander's son. And he recognizes the honor within Billy, so he rescues him from Cobra Commander's wrath, thus really cementing this conflicting good-bad side to Storm Shadow, uh, which was, you know, if you reflect in the yin and the yang, between the black and the white, between Storm Shadow and Snake Eyes, Snake Eyes is the good guy in black, Storm Shadow was the bad guy in white. Later on, they put him in gray. Get it? You see what they were going for there? And the story goes that Larry Hama had uh, crafted this turn to good because he realized that Storm Shadow was the only prominent Asian character in the comic books. So he didn't want him to be a bad guy. And it wasn't until many, many issues were printed showing that Storm Shadow was kind of going to the to the light side that Hasbro found out and were like, hey, uh, okay, I guess Storm Shadow's a good guy now. So then they started making the toy reflect that. And Storm Shadow went on to have a whole lot more adventures, mostly revolving around him and Snake Eyes and who killed the Hard Master. But his most, his next like biggest memorable contribution to the canon is he was the final piece of DNA that created Serpentor, the Cobra Emperor. His body, because he is struck down, um, I believe by a, a Baroness Sniper bullet, his body is dropped into the vat of DNA that Mindbender used to create Serpentor. And so Serpentor got some of Storm Shadow's DNA and the process rejuvenated Storm Shadow's dormant dead body. A little bit like Superman returned before Superman got killed and returned. You know what I'm saying? And that's all the time I have for Storm Shadow, man. I want to thank you, Hooded Cobra Commander, for this opportunity to share my uh, love and passion for Tommy Arishikage. Uh, he's an amazing character, and they've really given him a ton to do in the in the books. He actually he has his own solo series for a while. We don't we don't have time for all the Storm Shadow information, but that's it for now. Remember, this is Joe Slepsky from the Joe and Joe Podcast. Find me on iTunes. Find me on Stitcher. Find me anywhere you get your podcast. Follow me at Joe and Joe Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and all that good stuff. And we'll see you every Wednesday. Now you Joe, and Joeing is half the battle. Thank you, Joe. I love your show, and thank you for being on mine. Make sure you check out Joe on Joe. There is disagreement among G.I. Joe fans about whether Storm Shadow should properly be considered a Cobra character or a G.I. Joe character. I fully embrace Storm Shadow's transition to G.I. Joe, but I'm interested in knowing what you think. Do you consider Storm Shadow to be perpetually a member of Cobra, or do you accept his transition to the good guys? Looking at Storm Shadow version 2 overall, I love this figure, and I understand not everyone does. I believe I understand the criticisms about this figure. The first version of Storm Shadow is iconic. It's hard to beat that. This updated version certainly is more detailed, but he has what I think some people consider a strange looking camouflage pattern, and the accessories, although they're not bad, not quite as good as version 1. While I understand the criticisms, I still really like this figure. I don't mind the camouflage pattern and I really like the details that they added, especially the tattoo on the arm that came straight from the comic book. There is some room for improvement on the accessories. I understand red probably gave them the splash of color that they wanted, but I would really like to see those accessories in black. And while the backpack does a good job of holding one accessory, I'd kind of like it to hold all of the accessories like the original 
backpack did. Another reason why some fans may not like this particular figure is Storm Shadow is now a G.I. Joe. He is no longer a Cobra, and that came from the comic book. And for people who are primarily fans of the cartoon series, that may not feel right. I am primarily a fan of the comic book series, so I don't mind this at all. I very much enjoyed the long character arc that transitioned Storm Shadow from a bad guy to a good guy, and there were some powerful moments in there. Storm Shadow's story is parallel to Snake Eyes. They don't follow exactly the same path, but their impact is almost equal. A lot of the things that motivate Storm Shadow also motivate Snake Eyes. So yeah, I love Storm Shadow, I love Snake Eyes, I like the first version of Storm Shadow better, but this is still a really nice top tier figure. So now I just can't stop thinking about ninjas. These guys are cool, and by cool I mean totally sweet. That was my review of Storm Shadow version 2. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you Joe Slepsky from the Joe on Joe podcast for stopping by and taking over an entire segment of this video. Very kind of you sir. Thank you Brian Wilkins aka Special Mission Force for the title card image. It was totally sweet. And thank you Matt Todd for the t-shirt. I love it. It was really nice to look at a good figure this week after looking at ugly figures for a whole month, and the review we got set up for next week is also really good. I hope you will join me then. Thank you to my patrons for all their support, and thank you to everyone who watches these videos. If you like these videos, please consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and sharing the videos with your friends. You can find me on social media, on Facebook and Twitter, and I have a website, hcc788.com. I'll see you next week with another Vintage G.I. Joe toy review. It's not ninjas, but it's really good. I'll see you then, and until then, remember, only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe. Ultimate power.